Today is a great day. We are with Jean-François Mojon, one of really my heroes and one of those people that have really influenced independent watchmaking throughout the decades, like very few others. Jean-François, welcome to London. It's great to see you today. Thank you, Pietro. Nice to be here. Fantastic. We, uh, with Jean-François, we're going to have a little bit of an excursus uh, from his career as an independent conceptor, a movement manufacturer, inventor, creator, to his role today with Cyrus watches, which is the reason why today we're meeting collectors here in London to showcase Cyrus and the innovation related to, to Cyrus. But going back to Jean-Francois, Jean-Francois, you are one of the people that really inspire me to create even the limited edition to uh, reward the real creators, the real inventors, because I think watchmaking is here to stay for as long as innovation will be here. So. Thank you for your work, and can you explain me why you think innovation is so important in watchmaking? Innovation is very important. Uh, without innovation, for me, there is no future, because we cannot just stay where we are. We are to see forward, and uh, we see also the wide range of brands on the market. And, uh, each one has to find his own territory by also be innovative. Which is, uh, which takes me to the next question because you've been responsible for so many brands actually, or independent watchmakers being out there and trying to propose their own uh, language in horology. Because you've been behind many inspiring projects such as, if I can mention some names, MBNF, Chapek, Trilob, HYT, so many very interesting interpretation of independent watchmaking. So, so far out in time, how do you feel about that? Do you feel proud to have helped so many watchmakers? Do you think this had a massive contribution, like I think, in developing independent watchmaking? How do you feel about your role as, uh, you know, powering independent watchmakers? I would say our role is one step among many others and uh, I would not like to highlight too much our work because the brands are taking the risk mainly they are also often bringing to us the brief the first brief and then our work is done to follow it and to to achieve it in a good way with quality professional and what I would say is the diversity, diversity of work uh, we, we did also by the past, we do now, is so interesting because we are working with so different brands, so different ways also to express the innovation and the new products. Absolutely. And, uh, and, uh I believe looking at your personal excursus, you know, from the invention of the Opus 10, for example, with Harry Winston, which was a bit of a pivotal piece for Jean-François Mojon, do you feel um, then by experimenting on so many other projects and now with Cyrus, which is a brand that is made for innovation, do you feel you have come to a place where you can express yourself totally from the mechanical perspective, engineering perspective, an aesthetical perspective. Yes, you're right. The Opus 10 is a milestone for us because it's the first time we had the opportunity to express ourselves totally because we were open really to propose something new. The brief were, were, was really uh, simple. He has to, to make a wow effect, you know? And uh, it's also interesting because Back to the Opus 10, we work a lot with the kinematic, with satellites also, gearing, special gearing, we still use today. There is in particular one piece that we will showcase today, tonight in London, to our collectors, is the ethereal orbital tourbillon, which is a little bit, when I saw this piece, I thought about obviously you being involved, uh, I know about the Opus 10 and what the Opus 10 represented in your career, 
uh, is the orbital tourbillon a little bit uh, like a, like a, 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 you know an icing on the cake, a final uh, kind of achievement that you are come to, or is it the beginning of new developments for Cyrus? I would say it's, it's both, because is the summary of the experience we we had put together in a piece. But it's not the only one. For example, what we did also for Hermes is also on one aspect based on this special gearing. Yeah. And uh, we have plenty other projects <laughs> in the pipeline. Uh, there, will, there will be also, I think, uh, future milestone for us. Yeah. yeah. So because because apart from the orbital tourbillon, of course, Cyrus has been making a name over the last few years with pieces like the vertical, the Klepsis vertical tourbillon, or the double chronograph, which is called the dice, the Klepsis dice, which, just to give an example, uh, an example, Jean-Francois, we take the chronograph for granted sometimes because there are so many chronographs out there. But chronograph, for a watchmaker like yourself, is one of the most difficult, probably, uh, complications. So, how was the conception and the development of the DICE double chronograph for you? I would say first we thought uh, to develop a chronograph for Cyrus, but of course it would not be a classic uh, chronograph and we had different kind of complication based on the chronograph and at the end we came to the double independent chronograph because once again is a known complication the chronograph but in this kind of combination with two chronographs independent it was never done before yeah. yeah and the functionality for you is very important as well because the question is always what do you do with a double chronograph and there are things you can achieve that you couldn't without a double chronograph. absolutely that's always there is a purpose behind is the, not just making two chronographs for, for the beauty of making two chronographs, chronograph, but it's also because you can start two different uh, events at a different time and uh, it makes sense. But uh, also you're right, the chronograph is not easy to, to, to manage, uh, to be reliable in the time, in the duration, and uh, we put many efforts on specifically on that project. And of course you need a bit of a, a big mechanical canvas to express your creativity as a watchmaker, but you embraced the challenge, for example, on this particular piece, the dice a double chronograph, to work on a 42 millimeters case, which is something that was not done before at this level of complexity. So how difficult was it? Yes, one challenge we faced is of course the space we had uh, we had uh, at uh, disposition uh, we had also to face different kind of mechanical challenges to mix both uh, chronographs without uh, making trouble from one to the other and uh, we put also uh, specific attention to the testing at the end that we make the first prototype the functionality and also all the reliability during uh, over many years that's very very important for us and this is what Cyrus was offering you as well because as I said we've been fundamental to the development of so many uh, orological projects that are so now established within you know the collector's minds but what was it that Cyrus could offer to you to really express your creativity and your savoir-faire into orology that you really liked? What is of Cyrus that you really uh, enjoy and, and recognize as a great quality? I uh, would say the opportunity we have to express innovation by Cyrus is very open because is uh, quite contemporary a brand and uh, also we can propose specific complications which have never been done before 
So there are no limits in there terms no of limits. research, development and execution. Exactly. Which is what draws me into Cyrus and I really believe that Cyrus could have been an incredible addition to the collection of independent watchmakers at the limited edition. And uh, one thing that uh, really fascinates is the total devotion to this magic word that is actually uh, innovation. So within our um, years of developing incredible mechanical calibers, you've worked with some uh, obviously very skilled watchmakers. And I'm sure that one thing is having the ideas, one thing is having the right people to develop certain things with. At Cyrus today, how many watchmakers are actually involved? And what are the skills that are there in particular? More on the engineering side, on the finishing, or on the aesthetics and the design, you would say? I would say that we need all the skills <laughs> of the company to achieve our Cyrus watch at, at the end. And I would uh, really uh, say that it's a teamwork, very, very important. And uh, is the, the skills we built over the, I would say now, uh, soon 20 years. It's, uh, it's a long work, long time uh, collaboration with, with the people and not only internally but also with the partners, suppliers who also uh, made exceptional uh, work for, for us and for Cyrus. Yeah, so today Cyrus is a, is a great, efficient machine that involves Cronod to a certain level, Cyrus itself and external suppliers all working together. Absolutely, yeah. exactly. Fantastic, so we can't wait to see the watches in the flesh and uh, this will happen uh, tonight with our collectors here. I hope you'll enjoy having a, a first-hand you know, feedback from, uh, from our collectors and I wish you can have a great time uh, in London and thank you again for your time and for being with us. Thank you, I will sure enjoy this evening, thank you.